So a big part of algebra is solving absolute value problems. And uh, this would include solving absolute value equations like this problem right here, or maybe even an absolute value inequality. But uh, let's go to take a look at this problem. We have the absolute value of x squared minus 6 is equal to 5x. Obviously, we want to solve this equation, but this is not going to be that easy, even if you know how to solve a basic absolute value equation. All right, uh, there are a few added twists that make this problem a little bit more complex. And uh, as such, I think most of you out there are not going to figure this out. But who knows, I could be wrong. Matter of fact, if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. And then, of course, we'll talk about exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now, of course, we're talking about absolute value, so hopefully you know the answer to, let's say, the absolute value of negative 3, right? So if you're like, well, I don't even know how to do that problem, well, don't run away because I'll explain all this in just one second. But the absolute value of negative 3 happens to be a positive 3, and the absolute value of a positive 3 is also a positive 3. But hopefully you have some experience in solving equations like the absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to 7. So if you can solve this uh, equation right here, uh, well, hopefully I think you should be able to figure this out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And before we take on this problem, again, we have the absolute value of uh, x squared minus 6 is equal to 5x. If you're looking at a problem, you know, any problem in math, especially algebra, and you're like, all right, I have no idea what to do here. Well, it's uh, always a good idea to maybe take a uh, simpler version of the problem and review the steps or the procedure to solve this type of problem. All right, so we're dealing with an absolute value equation. And uh, let's take a real simple absolute value equation like this. So the absolute value of x is equal to 5. Okay. Now, what is this uh, saying? Well, the absolute value of some number is 5. All right, so what is the uh, number or what, what is x equal to? What is the solution to this absolute value equation? Well, you can see I have the answer x is equal to both positive and negative 5 because the absolute value of a positive 5 is 5 and the absolute value of negative 5 is also uh, 5, okay? So uh, absolute value equations always have two solutions, okay? That's a, a kind of a big concept that you should hopefully remember or no, but uh, here you can see that we do have two solutions, both positive and negative five uh, solve this equation. But uh, what is absolute value? Okay, in other words, why is the absolute value of five and the absolute value of negative five, five? Now, um, a lot of students kind of think, or a lot of people think, well, the absolute value uh, just always g gives you the positive version of that number. Whether it's positive or negative, it's always positive. Yes, and that's correct, but really the absolute value is a uh, the distance a number is from zero on a number line. Okay, so let's go to take a look at uh, our five and negative five here. So what is the distance if we kind of go from zero and we go five units out to the right, okay? Distance is always positive, okay? So what number is five units away from zero on a number line? Well, five is, right? So five is uh, five units away and it's, uh, its distance is five uh, from zero on the number line, but that's not the only number. Uh, negative five is also five units away from zero. So the distance a number is from zero on a number line is by definition absolute value. That's why negative five and five have the same measurement, okay, the same distance. Remember, distance is always positive, more or less. You kind of want to think of that, uh, or you want to think of distance in terms of positive values. Now, there can, you can have negative distance in you know physics kind of situations or uh, different type of scenarios. But in terms of absolute value, distance is always going to be positive. All right, so uh, this is a real kind of basic review of absolute value. Now, let's go to take it a step further and see if you could solve this equation right here. All right, so this is the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. 
Now, hopefully this is review for most of you out there. Like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, get to this uh, more exciting problem. I don't need to do this basic stuff. I already know how to do this. Well, let's just kind of double check. And for those of you out there that, um, you know, need to review absolute value equations, well, this is a perfect little kind of step up in terms of level of difficulty. All right, so the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. Well, what is x plus 2? Well, x plus 2 must be what number? Well, it's got to be... Uh, 5 or negative 5 because these are the only two values that we can plug in uh, you know into an absolute value function and get 5 as our answer right so x plus 2 is kind of incognito it's trying to hide out and be like hey I already know who, what you are x plus 2 you got to be equal to 5 or negative 5 right because by the absolute value of 5 and absolute value of negative 5 are the only two numbers that are going to get uh, an answer of a positive 5 all right so to solve this equation what we're going to do is set x plus 2 to uh, equal to both 5 and negative 5 because it could be equal to both numbers. So x plus 2 is equal to 5 and x plus 2 is equal to negative 5. And then we just basically solve the respective equations here. We'll just subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. So x is 3 and here we'll subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. x is uh, equal to negative 7. Again, we have two uh, solutions to our absolute value equation. All right, so just a quick review on how to solve absolute value equations in general. Now, if you understand this, well, this is a, kind of the minimum level of knowledge that you need in order to take on our problem because it's going to be very exciting uh, in terms of the different things that we need to uh, talk about. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can, but the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so we have the absolute value of x uh, squared minus 6 is equal to 5x. Now, when you solve absolute value or when you learn how to solve absolute value equations, typically this is at, though, maybe the pre-algebra level. Uh, you can start seeing this uh, certainly in the algebra one, first year algebra level. So uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing here some other skills that we're going to need um, come from this level of math, okay, like first year algebra. So I'm going to be doing some things here uh, that uh, hopefully you understand. And if you need help with any of this, I'll give you some specific recommendations here in just one second. All right, so we have the absolute value of x squared minus 6 uh, is equal to 5x. All right, so remember, uh, in our previous problem, we had like x plus 2 is equal to 5 what we do is we take what's inside the absolute value and we set it equal to both the positive and negative version of this number. So this is what we need to do here, okay? So we're going to set what's inside the absolute value function equal to both positive and negative uh, 5x, okay? So this is our value, right? So this is some, you know, distance on the number line. All right, so we have x squared minus 6 is equal to positive 5x and x squared minus 6 is equal to negative 5x. All right, so what we need to do now is solve for x, and what we're dealing with here is a lovely quadratic equation, and hopefully you know how to solve a quadratic equation. If you don't, I'm going to show you the steps, and if you don't understand these steps, matter of fact, let me just stop and tell you where you can get uh, help on all this stuff. Check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to them in the description of this video, but where you want to go for this level of math is either my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Uh, probably for most of you out there, you want to check out my Algebra 1. And if you're not even a math student, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I haven't uh, taken Algebra uh, since 1967. Well, if that happens to be the case, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. That is a course for those of you that want to rebuild your math skills that you lost many years ago. All right, but uh, here is our two equations. We have x squared minus 6 is equal to 5x, and x squared minus 6 is equal to negative 5x. All right, so what we're going to do is set... 
uh, both of these equations uh, equal to zero, and we're going to write uh, these equations in standard form, i.e. we have a quadratic trinomial, uh, i.e. Uh, it's x squared x and then our number, so that's what standard, forms, um, standard form means. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 6 because we're going to subtract 5x from both sides of the equation, and then we're going to shuffle things around and get things in standard form. And here we're going to add 5x to both sides of the equation and then put it in standard form and set it equal to zero. All right, so luckily for us, uh, both of these uh, quadratic trinomials are factorable. We can factor this um, as x minus 6 times x plus 1, and then we're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So x is equal to 6 and x is equal to negative 1. Again, if you don't know what I'm doing, you need to review uh, how to solve quadratic equations. By the way, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on these topics as well. All right, so over here, we can factor this lovely uh, trinomial into x plus 6 and x minus 1. So this thing times this thing is equal to 0. Same thing over here. We have two factors equal to 0. So we're setting each factor uh, equal to 0 and solving. So in other words, x plus 6 is equal to 0. x minus 1 is equal to 0. Same thing on this side. And then we uh, solve these respective uh, factors for x. So x is going to be negative 6 here. And x minus 1, when we solve for x, when we set this equal to 0, we have x is equal to 1. Okay, so we have four solutions here, uh, 6, negative 1, negative 6, and 1. Now, if you were able to get these answers, that's still super impressive. Matter of fact, you were very, very uh, close to the full solution. So how do we know which one of these answers is uh, the correct answer? So clearly, not all of these numbers are part of the solution. Okay, remember the solution... Uh, is uh, 1 and 6, but we have a negative 1 and negative 6. So why is it that we need to kind of throw away negative 1 and negative 6 from our solution? Well, these happen to be what we call extraneous roots. Now, the reason why they're extraneous is because if we plug in, in this x right here, uh, either negative 1, okay, or a negative 6, we're going to get a negative value over here, right, on this side of the equation. So we can't have the absolute value of a number cannot be negative, right? So that's why x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to neg uh, negative 6. These uh, cannot be part of the solution set because it would make this value negative, meaning the distance away from 0 negative, and that is not the case. This always has to be positive. So these two things right here are extraneous, uh, i.e., uh, x equals uh, 6 and x equals 1 are the correct solutions. All right, so again, if you got this entire thing right, very, very, very good. And uh, if you didn't, don't feel bad. And hopefully this was a quick, good, quick review on absolute value equations. Of course, the only way to get better in anything is to practice, practice, practice. So, you know, don't watch this one video and be like, all right, I'm a full expert, certified professional in absolute value equations. No, you want to challenge yourself with other type of uh, absolute value problems, you, obviously more equations, inequalities, how to graph absolute value functions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.